Okay, welcome. My name is Jehan. Um, I'm going to show you how to emulate uh, this beautiful delay unit, the Roland Space Echo, in Ableton today, only using uh, native Ableton plugins. I think this is really important to learn um, because you have uh, so much horsepower available to you in any day DAW these days. Um, especially Ableton, which is so modular, and you can pretty much make whatever you want to make um, inside just its native plugins. And I feel like that's what we're really learning here, uh, why it's best practice to use native plugins where possible. Um, there's a few reasons. The first one and most obvious is the CPU hit. Um, obviously, when you use a native plugin, you can have pretty much as many of them as you like, whereas when using a third party, it, it usually eats a lot more um, resources on your CPU and RAM. Um, but more than that is uh, I think you'll find after years and years of making tunes, it's just easier. The way presets are handled in your door, um, the, the ease of use and the speed and the recallability once the door changes versions. And um, it's just better. If you can do it natively, do it natively. Um, I think you're projects in the five years from now will, will really thank you for that and also um, it kind of just taps into a wisdom that we already know I think in in many aspects of life not just music that less is more always so if you can do this with the tools available you know use it don't go looking for um, something else when the answer is right under your nose um, so in doing this, we're basically going to uh, learn two other things. We're going to learn how to use chains and macros and a bit of parallel processing to create a, um, a vintage effects unit. And um, we're also going to learn uh, how to tweak the minimum and maximum values of macros to really tailor whatever you're making um, in that device. Uh, this is a really important skill when you're making devices in Ableton. And uh, I think if it's something you don't know, it's definitely something you should. So let's go into Ableton. I'm using Ableton Live Lite, which is, uh, you know, literally the most basic version of Ableton I could find. And the reason I'm doing that is I want to show you how this can be achieved with uh, just the most basic software possible. So I've got my acapella here and I've got my device. I've laid the device out into three sections, really. There's the delay, the chorus, and the reverb. And you can see over here on the space echo, that's exactly how it's laid out too. There's a chorus section, there's a delay, there's a reverb, and there's a whole bunch of other parameters which you can get inside um, the rack anyway too. But these are the most important. So let's go back to our rack and let's see what we're working with. Okay, so we're in Ableton. The first thing I want you to notice is that I have three chains here, um, each with one of those main components from the space echo. The chorus, the delay or echo, and the reverb. So I've got three chains with a delay, chorus, and reverb, and I've also got this fourth chain, um, which is dry, which we'll come back to a little bit later, but very important. So if I go to my delay, and we'll focus on these three parameters for the moment, let's look at what the delay level does. Come with me, tonight, tonight. Can't you see? I wanna be with you. Yep, very straightforward. That's introducing how much delay you want. This time parameter, um, very interesting in Ableton because we're going to use the um, repitch mode, which is one of my favorite kind of little buttons, you know, tucked away in Ableton that um, really allows you to emulate these older machines and the, the way that the tape worked in terms of pitching it up and down. So at the moment, the delay value is at three. I'm going to push it up to five while it's playing. And you'll see what I mean by these cool pitch effects. All right. So by manipulating the time, by 
by manipulating the time, you get these really cool pitch effects. And, you know, what I would probably do is I would be recording that onto another audio track, um, just, just the effect, or, or maybe just into a tape recorder altogether, and I would sample that later and put that over my tracks. Um, let's look at this third parameter now, the feedback. The feedback parameter and um, what's really interesting about the feedback parameter is how it relates to this button over here, the freeze in Ableton. Now this is one of my favorite effects in Ableton, such a tiny button for so much joy. But basically when the feedback goes to the maximum value, the freeze is engaged. And you can see when I take it off the maximum value, uh, the button gets disengaged. So we can really use this to um, our advantage. Uh, let me show you what I mean. We're going to um, play a little bit of this sample and then we're going to engage the freeze and really let it go. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to turn the freeze on maximum. I'm going to turn the sample off. Now that's just going to go forever. And what's really cool is when that's going forever, we can do something like record it into another channel. So we set this to resampling, we hit record, and we just take that audio, put it into a new clip. You can see Ableton going for it there. Um, so if we go back to our delay now and we take the feedback down from the maximum value, you'll hear the delays slowly fade away. So as long as it's on the maximum value, it's going to go on infinitely, but as soon as we back away, um, they start to die off. And now we've got some pretty cool um, little chops here that I would probably take this, put it into a sampler, um, sample it to some pads or keys and play it over my tracks. It's something I use all the time. Let's go back to our uh, Space Echo Rack. And this time um, we're gonna introduce the chorus and the reverb elements. This is really gonna put the space in Space Echo. Let's have a look. Right, so they really add some um, some space, some movement around the echo, um, which is pretty essential to that sound, I think. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about is this dry control. Now, when you use the dry control in conjunction with the delay level, you really can get some cool kind of effects. Um, rather than me talk about it, let's just have a little bit of a jam, which is really what this whole thing is meant to be about. It's turning knobs and having fun. So let's go. <laughs> right? So um, this dry control um, can really help you kind of like blend the original single in and out and in conjunction with the delay level it's quite powerful. So the last thing I just want to talk about is this low cut feature here. Yeah, so on each of these individual chains, the delay, chorus and reverb, I've added an auto filter and I've mapped the um, uh, low cut of that auto filter to this knob here. And I think that's really important when you're using a delay unit is you don't want um, the echoes to muddy up your low end. So if you can have a bit of a, um, a roll off, that's very good. 
save you some headroom. And um, what I've done here is a really important concept that I think you need to know if you don't know. So basically, by clicking the map button, uh, I can specify the minimum and maximum values of these filters. The minimum is obviously 26 hertz. The maximum is 300 hertz. Every time I turn this low cut up to maximum, I don't want it to be going to like 20K, right? I just want it to go to 300 hertz. So that's why I've set that here. If I did want it to go to like 20K, I would put it up to about 20K here. And then when I go up, it would go all the way to um, 20K like that. But that's not what I want. I only want the maximum to be 300. And um, this might seem like a small thing, but it's actually huge in terms of Ableton. You, when you're creating a custom device, you need to be coming in here to define your minimum and maximum values. That's how I got the freeze function to work before at the maximum value over here. And uh, you need to play with this to really get some cool devices and macros going on. So, um, you know, this is very powerful. I'll often resample my delays back into the DAW of choice or to a tape recorder or something like that. And then I'll put it into a sampler and um, play those chops over my music. Um, I hope it's been useful. Uh, you can download this rack um, for free, obviously. And uh, I would really encourage you to open the rack up and press this map button and see how I've mapped things and really get your head around that because that's where the true power is. All right, um, enjoy and uh, have fun making music. All right, bye.